What's up? How's it going, everybody? Hey, I want to give you a system overview of what we did here on this big off-grid project. Uh, it was a long one. Uh, we used some new products that we've never used before. It was our first time working with the Simplify Lithium battery. Uh, this is the 5 3.4. We have 10 of them for uh, 34 kilowatt hours of, of total storage. Um, I've really uh, had a great time working with them. Uh, we learned a lot about the wire management and uh, the proper way to combine everything. Uh, and so far, we've been super impressed with how these work. These were a very easy install, and I think their original uh, conception was to be a simple replacement for lead acid, and they've done that. They've, they were very easy to work with on the programming between the midnight controllers and the outback inverters, and so far, everything has just been super seamless and went together very well. Of course, we had some learning curves, uh, as this was new material that we hadn't used before, but we took some time, really thought it out, laid things out a few times, and uh, kind of came up with what we have here. Uh, what we're doing today, actually, is we're down here meeting the, uh, the propane company, and we have the whole system. We've been running off these batteries now for about a day, uh, day and a half, and uh, you can see we've got low battery indicators, even though we still have plenty of reserve capacity left. We still have two volts of usable power on these things. Um, what we're doing today is we're gonna fire up the generator, and do a load test to make sure that all the propane is set accurately for a heavy charging kind of scenario. So uh, the system overview of what we have here is we have uh, three Outback Radian 8048As. This is the new, the new model that they came out with. It's supposed to be uh, the Rule 21 compliant and it actually, with the upgrades that they did on this system with the new Mate 3S, um, with the higher low battery cutout worked perfectly with these batteries. Uh, so we have three of those, uh, so we have 24 kilowatt hours of available storage. Uh, I left space to add one more if we really needed it as the property grows. I built everything to be super modular. Um, I think I can get nine more simplifies in here with no problem if I really needed to. Um, it's a very expansive system. I have extra conduits going out for wind turbine, uh, more solar panels, so it's very fluid with everything we can do here. So we have the radians, we have uh, 10 of the Simplify uh, 3.4s. Uh, I really like, I always use the, uh, the Midnight Flexware 1000s for all my combiners. This is of course my battery combiner that brings everything in and uh, has all of my bus bar in there for all of my combining of my batteries. And then if we scroll over here, I have another Flexware 1000 that I use for all of the breakering just for the charge controllers. Uh, I have everything uh, wired up, input, output. I have uh, primary disconnect, so I actually can dump the whole renewable combiner uh, with just the flip of a switch. And I have plenty of space right here to add another, uh, I don't know, I can add four more charge controllers. Uh, I can feed off to do another one if I need to for dump loads. I have uh, everything set up right now so that I can put a hybrid mini split in that will feed up out the top and the condenser will be out by the generator. So we have everything prepped to feed 48 volts off either this panel or the battery combiner so we can try to cool this room and also uh, in uh, a really cold winter if we need to keep the room warm when the generator is running for the batteries to really keep them at optimal temperatures so that way they're happy. It's all about longevity of this system and I find that climate control of some of these bigger rooms when we're building these microgrids is super important. Uh, so, you know, we kind of got it prepped for all this. One of the other things that we have going on over here, if we swing around, is you'll see we have uh, all of our AC distribution panels. When you get to a system beyond one radiant, you can't use the mechanical bypass that's included in the system. So you have to have a generator input that allows you to split the feeds to each system. And also a main inverter panel that will bring all the feeds from these inverters and then combine them. We run out of both of those panels into a manual transfer switch, which will allow us to bypass in the event that there's anything wrong with the system or we need to do any maintenance and run directly off the generator. With the pull of a handle and the flip of a switch, I uh, have a manual start for the generator also. We can bypass the whole system and go completely uh, generator direct. I also have a manual transfer switch set up out there uh, at the generator also that will allow us to run off of either the primary generator or hook up a temp generator in the issue that there's a problem with the generator. I've really built a lot of redundancies into these systems so that in any type of scenario uh, I can have them back up and running. We have spare hardware uh, to fix inverters. Uh, actually inverter number three 
is primarily going to be a backup inverter so that I can come down in the event of an issue and fire up a third inverter and keep this thing rolling. So this is kind of a rough overview of our power room that we have going here. Uh, it's pretty, pretty much a, a standard off-grid system. It's just really prepped to grow and be expansive because a lot of times these projects, um, they get bigger and bigger. I mean, if they want to add a swimming pool, I can do a swimming pool with a solar pool pump or I can feed a variable speed pump off the system. Uh, we have a lot of flexibility that way. Uh, you guys, if you follow my videos, you know I like gutter and I do a lot of distributed stuff with that. Uh, this one is interesting. We actually have a gutter divider in, in between uh, the inverters so we can do proper isolation between AC and DC. Um, so we learned some new stuff about that that we're, that we're incorporating in the next ones. But uh, let me go and I'll take you out and take a look at the generator. We just ran that generator super hard and uh, we put a max charge and what the best load that we could on it for right now so they could use a manometer and they could use the the load versus the gas drawdown and set the regulator for the system right uh, right here we have a Kohler 24 RCL generator um, this is a propane uh, water cooled 1800 rpm uh, 24 kW it's got a hundred amp uh, breaker on it and so it should do a great job for this system. I kind of chose on this to do potentially a little bit longer charge cycle after over having to put a really big generator in here um, that's just gonna always use a lot of, a lot of load uh, or a lot of fuel. Uh, potentially with this one, um, if they have parties or uh, events, we can run this one. And if they also need other load, we can use the gen support feature, which will allow the inverter to mesh power to the generator and carry any load that we need to, but not be overly sized so that we're just wasteful on our propane load. So I'll take you up a little closer and show you what we got. Okay, so what we have here is the Kohler 24 RCL propane generator. Uh, this is a dual fuel. It was very easy with just the change of a uh, rotating on this knob right here. We were able to switch it from a natural gas, which was how it was shipped, to a propane. Uh, our propane guys in ViroPro came just now and uh, helped me re-go through all the commissioning sequence to make sure that the load would uh, match the fuel source that we had going to it. This has a GM four-cylinder uh, propane engine that's uh, fueling a 24 kW alternator. We have an 87 amp max power ratio for the alternator that's included with this. And uh, this should be a great unit for what we have uh, designed for this project and give us quite a long lifespan considering the fact that really it's going to be used in a standby rating um, because we have so much solar and our climate down here in kind of the, uh, the middle of California, maybe upper north, uh, depending on where you live for me, it's south. Uh, it, we get good weather here, and so the majority of this project is going to be really powered by renewable energy from the solar panels and the future wind turbine. So again, here's our Kohler generator. Uh, this is our, our kind of our backup power source for our off-grid system. And uh, next, I'll take you and I'll show you the solar. This off-grid system gets its power from 48 Solar World 295 watt modules. We decided to rack these using uh, mount solar uh, multi-pole mounts that were adjustable. 
Uh, it's only the, uh, the tilt that's adjustable on this system as we're in a valley. Um, doing a dual axis didn't make sense, but what I wanted to do is I really wanted to be able to utilize these structures as shade structures for their, their family gathering area. Let's try to keep solar so that it's appealing to people and serves a purpose, not just make power. They're very simple to adjust by cranking these. Two people can very easily adjust the pitch of it. We set them up so that in the is issue of there being a really high wind, which we get to these canyons, they're very easy to lower. We even made them a reminder. To wire up these systems, uh, we basically had uh, the array consists of, each array consists of 24 modules broke down into two sections of 12 that each feed into a, a midnight classic charge controller that then convert the power and regulate it to the 48 volt battery voltage. So again, this was uh, probably one of the most uh, laborious parts of the project for Kanan and I, uh, but it turned out really nice in the end. And again, we did really meticulous wire management, which I think will help in the longevity of the project. And they turned out very nice. One other thing I thought I'd show you guys about this system that I design into a lot of my off-grid systems is the ability to have multi multiple generator inputs. Um, meaning that this is going to be the backup power source for your house when you're off-grid. One of the things that you should consider is the ability to add in a secondary generator in case this thing has to be serviced or there's any issues because you know it's probably going to be raining or snowing or the elements are going to be against you or the odds in most situations. So one of the things I like to do is I like to add a 100 amp transfer switch. Um, you can also add a critical load sub panel that this will feed into and feed mo multiple uh, generators into that with a bypass assembly, but meaning that this is all outside in kind of a breezeway, um, I set it up with a manual transfer switch so that I could add a, a cord in to run to a remote generator outside here, and I could just simply select over and go into a bypass of this generator. This allows us, again, multiple redundancies to power this project in any, in any situation. All right, so what we got going on here is we have 10 simplified batteries. And the real objective that we're trying to reach is we need to get all these batteries, number one, we want equal battery length. Um, each one of these batteries is parallel. They're all 48 volts. They, have, uh, they all have their own independent breaker and shutoff switch that's tied into the safety management BMS system. So the objective here is to get all 10 of these batteries, or ever how many or many batteries you have. The system that we just did had six. Um, they have a guideline that they want you to follow that gives you a simple formula um, to project how many batteries you need per 8,000 watt inverter. Again, on this system, we're really only basing uh, that we're going to use two inverters full time and one is going to be a redundant, redundant backup for the system or it's going to be used for charging. Uh, one of the things I like to do is I like to not run my chargers at 100% for product uh, longevity. I'm usually running 80%. I think that's a little bit better on equipment. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get all of these batteries into this combiner with equal lengths. Um, so uh, we pretty much pulled off what our farthest battery was going to be, did the tightest routing that we could within the gutter, uh, and then duplicated all those cables. And these vertical gutters are basically the, the storage area for the uh, ca extra cables that we have because this battery being closer, uh, we didn't want to have all of that coiled up in here where all of our uh, primary connections are because this is stuff that we'll annually need to service and make sure that the cables are tightened. So the primary feat of the function of the gutters is to allow the extra cable to be really uh, managed and properly maintained. So kind of our flow pattern is the batteries are going into the gutter, coming up into the Outback Flexor 1000, and then they're connecting on bus bars that combine everything and then distribute to the system. Uh, all, again, all these batteries are all independently fused and break our breaker, and so that's when we're kind of, you know, it gives you a super simple uh, and safe attachment point that you can turn all of these batteries off, the connections are all dead while you're wiring them up, and keeps them very safe for people to install. So that was one of the other things we really liked about this system. The next thing we'll jump over to is to our solar. Coming from the solar panels, we have four midnight plastic charge controllers. These are bringing in the high voltage solar and stepping it down to the 48 volt batteries that simplifies here to the side. These allow proper coordination between all of the charge controllers by utilizing follow me. Each one is communicative and knows that when the first one signals that the batteries are full, we need them to stop charging and have the same algorithm so that we don't overcharge our batteries. These provide the safety of not overcharging. They also uh, adjust for any shading um, we kind of broke these up knowing that we have a little bit of morning and a little bit of evening shading 
we split these charge controllers up and grouped them so that we could try to keep it as efficient as possible. Behind me with the Flexware 1000 DC, we use this as our renewable combiner and it has all of the breakers for the input and the output of the Midnight Classic charge controllers and allows for all the safety and expansion of the system from, for anything that we want to put onto it later.